going to tackle about a Filipina named, Lucilla, Lalu. Lucilla, Lalu was the original chop shop lady, a term that described women whose body parts were dismembered and scattered across different parts of the city or province to cover up the identity of the victim. Sometime in the late 50s or early 60s, Lucilla Dolentina Lalu left her hometown of Candaba Pampanga, to try her luck in Manila. She initially worked as a waitress at a small bar and apparently, she was really good with money. Her hard-earned money, which she saved quite wisely, was enough to start several ventures, Lucy's House of Beauty, a salon on Mayhalik Street and Pagoda, which is a restaurant and cocktail lounge, nightclub located along Rizal Avenue in Santa Cruz, Manila. Not long after, she met a patrolman, Amy Anavira, a married man with whom she, nevertheless, decided to live in common loom marriage. The relationship produced a son. Then one summer day in 1967, Lucilla disappeared. On May 28, police officers found human body parts, a woman's pair of legs, cleanly cut in four pieces, wrapped with a newspaper dated May 14. The legs were found in a garbage can along Malabon Street not far from Pagoda, about a stone's throw from her cocktail lounge. They were handed over to the police by garbage collectors, who reported that the package felt cold, as like frozen meat being defrosted. They knew it was a woman, because of the well pedicured toenails. A day later, her body, headless and legless, was found on a vacant lot along near Pythanio de los Santos Avenue, just beyond the bend of Guadalupe Bridge in Makati. It took time, of course, to identify her in the little pieces, but the police managed somehow to get fingerprints off the dead hands which subsequently found to match those, in a police clearance file on one Lucilla Lalu. Several suspects were rounded up, most of them Lucilla's lovers. First was Florenti Rilas, a 19-year-old waiter at the Pagoda whom Lucilla had supported. However, Florenti was drinking with his friends during the time of the crime and he was released. He also did not have any motive to kill Lisa, the person who was both his lover and provider. She even rented out a love nest in Cuba where he could stay. However, the cashier at Bogota also said that Lisa had already broken up with Florenti. During the night of the murder, she also told Florenti and his friends that Lisa may be at the beauty parlor if they wanted to see her. Some witnesses even said they saw her being dragged by Florenti and his friends into a taxi in front of the parlor. These accounts were never verified. The second suspect was Amiano, Lancelot's common-law husband for seven years. Many already knew that they were having problems. Their six-year-old child had been staying at Lancelot's mother in Calo Ocan. Amiano was also prone to fits of anger and jealousy, having fired off his service gun three times in Lancelot's pagoda and beauty parlor, the month before she disappeared. The night of her disappearance, Amiano claimed to have had dinner with her in the beauty parlor at about 6.30 p.m. He left immediately after. Some witnesses, including some of Lisa's relatives, said that around the time Amiano left, they even saw her in the salon, sleeping. However, this contradicts Florenti's earlier testimony that he and Lisa had met, around 7.30 the same night, in another cocktail lounge on Rizal Avenue. There was another suspect, an executive of a printing firm who was also said to be Lancelot's lover. He was never named in any of the reports, only that he was suspected because of a cardboard material used in wrapping newsprints that was found under the torso of Lancelot. This mystery man seemed to have an alibi for the night and this angle wasn't explored any further. June 15, 1967. Jose Luis Santano, a 28-year-old dental student surfaced and confessed to the crime. He recounted and detailed the events that led to the brutal killing. However, a few days later, he retracted and repudiated his confession and insisted on his innocence. But the authorities were firmed on their decision to pursue the case against the new suspect. New evidences uncovered pinpointed to Santano. The police insisted that Jose Luis did it, especially since they found a hammer with bloodstains in the mezzanine, as well as the knife and razors in his initial testimony. They claimed that he was merely following his lawyer's suggestion of retracting his statement. When Jose Luis was being held by the NBI, they also received bomb threats to let the murder suspect go. He was released later on and some even say that Jose Luis is still alive and living abroad. Without any new leads, the investigators reached a dead end. The public, on the other hand, continued to speculate on the mystery. 
Lu Lalu's case remains unsolved to this day. Her gruesome death led to the rise of urban legends and cautionary tales told to young girls so they come home early, lest, they become the trap shop lady. It's so sad to think that Lu Lalu didn't get justice she deserved. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. Hope you'll have a good day and please always keep safe.